Hi guys and welcome to Freckle Finance. Today I wanted to do a little tribute to Gail Voss Oxlade. Um, basically about a month ago she retired and I wanted to show you guys all her budget spreadsheet because I think it's a really good place to start especially if you're not that great with Excel. She has a lot of the numbers adding into each other and all that stuff. So let's get started. Alright so you see her spreadsheet here, debt free forever. And for anyone who isn't aware of who Gail Voss Oxlade is, she is similar to Dave Ramsey. They don't align on all of their beliefs and money, but she's basically the Dave Ramsey of Canada. So you'll see here she's got your income and pretty much any source of income you could possibly think of. And she likes, she even makes sure net, like don't be budgeting on your gross income. So just to show you an example, let's put in 30000 no, sorry, that's a lot net. Let's do monthly. You can do yearly, you can do monthly. Let's put 3000 a month. And see, she also wants you to include spouses support, child support, any government benefits that you possibly get because you should be budgeting all of your money. So um, she has different categories. So she has all this stuff for mortgage, electricity, et cetera, et cetera, which will give you your housing costs which is, in my opinion, pretty important because a lot of people won't include things like maintenance and possibly condo fees when they're figuring out their housing costs. So it's definitely important that you do. And over here, your car payments, your insurance. Um, I'm, oh, yeah, sorry. If you see down here, she's got gas, repairs, public transit, all this stuff. And then you'll see here, it will tally up all your transportation money and it'll calculate how much you actually spend on transportation. So let's input numbers here for uh, mortgage. Let's put $600 electricity, 150. And guys, I don't really know how much it actually costs to put gas, heat, and all that stuff in a house. <laughs> I only have estimates here. And let's say maintenance is about 200. So wow, that was a pretty good job of getting close to 35%. And she has all the percentages along here of the maximum she recommends you have. So that doesn't mean you can't go lower. And in some cases, it doesn't mean you can't go higher, especially if you're in a higher cost of living area or something is just extremely expensive in that area. But obviously you have to make the sacrifices somewhere else. And home insurance, always important, let's say it's $60. So we actually get pretty much right up to 35 if you see. So pretty cool. Let's say you have a car payment of 150, insurance 150 for anyone who's American. That's actually really low uh, for someone my age. I know when I was a teenager, I paid about 175 and I live in a much smaller town than Toronto, so insurance was a lot cheaper and guys would pay well over 200 if they got into an accident, sometimes over 300, it was crazy. So for gas, let's say 150 a month, repairs 35 on average a month, and no public transportation or whatever. So you'll see that it says 16%, so wow, even at this, my mock person, is over the 15 percent recommended but you'll also see she's got these jar money thing which is really great because it's also similar to the dave ramsey envelope thing so you'll see so far she's saying okay you need 185 dollars a month in your jar money and that would be because of the gas and probably the repairs it looks like so and then she's got your weekly amount um of course i would probably pick a separate one for repairs over up clothes and vacations and charity and bank fees, clubs and unions, sports and hobbies, emergency fund, taxes, debt repayment. Let's say your debt repayment is 300 a month. I have no idea where we are. Okay, so let's see how much we have left of money. There's still money left to use in this fake thing. Um, Gail was always adamant that you should be saving while paying off debt. I know that is a difference uh, between her and Dave Ramsey, and I'm pretty much cool with whatever way you do it, but I have arguments that work for both ways. Um, you should eventually get him to say it at the most though. So let's say for groceries, $350, and you'll see now she's got over here, you need $350 for food, which works out to 80.77. So it's a really great tool to kind of calculate some of the stuff that you wouldn't normally, or not that you wouldn't normally, that would be harder for you to calculate and just wouldn't be as easy. And she'll see so far the life is well under the 25%. The debt is under 15%. However, while she says that debt should be under 15%, um, she's not as against um, getting loans as Dave Ramsey is, but also she doesn't think you should really be in a lot of debt. However, if you need to pay more than 15% of your income to 
pay off your debt, then she would definitely say do pay off more. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I don't want to go filling in everything. I just kind of wanted to show you how all of this works. And I think it's really good. When Before I made my spreadsheet, I actually did use this because I thought it was really handy and just shows you right at the side like, oh, it's too much or too little and it's a great way. And this is just online. Um, you can see the website link up here and I will link it in the description box below. But yeah, I think it's great. And then make sure you're adding everything. You just got tons of spots. And I'm pretty sure since she's been doing this for a long time that she's got pretty much every category you can possibly think of. So like for me, hobbies and sports, that would be like one category, but she's kind of got it as two different ones. So definitely if you're just starting on budgeting, I think this is a great starting tool, especially since it's free and you don't have to download anything. Um, I believe that you can print it off and save it as well, but eventually you'll probably want to move into something that you can use more easily month to month. But when you're working out your budget, I think this is a great tool. So I definitely find Gail to be an inspiration, especially since she is in her 50s and has decided to retire, which does preach that you should retire one day. So although I'm really sad that there's no more chance unless she comes out of retirement for a TV show and she won't be doing radio shows anymore, I'm really happy that she's taking her own invoice sorry, her own advice and enjoying her retirement. If you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed already, make sure you click that subscribe button below and give a big thumbs up for budgeting. So I hope if you haven't started budgeting already, that this will be an incentive to get you to start as it's super easy to use. And remember, no matter what your financial situation is, make sure to have a great day. Bye.